Good evening, Facebook family. Welcome to another episode of Marriage Mondays with Nick and Trina Brunson. And tonight we're going to talk about uh, marriage mentors and how important they can, the important part they can play in the success of your marriage and keeping you, hopefully, together and, and yeah, stable. Yeah, we've definitely benefited from marriage mentors as well sure. as have been marriage mentors to others. Mm-hmm. So we definitely, this is a topic we definitely have some experience in. Just a little bit. So we're waiting for folks to come in so we can get started. Um, so we hope everything's going well for you and for your family. This uh, is spring now, isn't it? Uh, yep, it's yeah, it is spring. Just kind of slipped the phones. Yeah, so happy spring to everybody. Um, and of course, you know, we represent Crown Kingdom Cultural Center. That's our church ministry that we're a part of. We are the marriage ministry directors. And our hope is that this... 30 minutes that we spend with you guys every week, that it will be an encouragement to you, that it will inspire you to sow into your own marriage, that that you will study these topics and examine how they work in your marriage, Mm -hmm. and that it will uh, evoke some in in the conversation (laughs) between you and your spouse. Right. So, um, that's it we want to get into with this. Well, it's a little early. Right. <laughs> Wait, no folks coming. Um, we do ask that you would sh- go ahead and share um, for those that have joined us. Uh, is that mom? I think I see up top on the image. So, hello. Thank you for joining us. So, go ahead if you would um, share, like, share. Um, feel free to comment throughout the lesson. Um, and for those of you that are watching it as a recording, we submit the same to you that you would like it, share it, comment, um, so that we can know that you're there. Um, it's nice to see the numbers, but it's even better to see uh, actual people making comments and interacting. Let us know if the lesson is helpful to you, if you have questions, comments, additional experiences. Um, good evening, Rhonda Johnson. Thank you for joining mm-hmm. us. Um, so we always want your feedback, and we want you to share. Share this with as many people as you think might benefit from it. So, uh, good evening, Emily Anderson. Sarah uh, Gordon. Yep, got Sarah Gordon on too. Okay. My Christian. Okay, I miss some folks. Uh Oh, you see them better on here. Okay. So, uh, do you want to go ahead and get started? Yeah, we got got a few folks that are in right now. Appreciate y'all joining us. Um, marriage mentors, these are, are people that, these are married couples, not just people, but married couples mm-hmm. that um, you have some trust in, um, married couples that are older than you and your, your spouse or have a, 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 a marriage that's older than you and your spouse. Right, they don't have to be older than you. You, but their marriage has to be. They need a more seasoned marriage. marriage. You don't okay. want somebody mentoring you who is close to your number of years of marriage you need someone who has been through some things um how far i don't know how far i don't want to go too fast what you mean okay it's okay what i'm saying oh yeah um you want someone who is who has been married long enough to have had some ups and downs Uh you want someone whose um marriage is stable you want someone who um, honors God and has similar a similar belief system to yours, um, so that the instruction and advice that they give you is not contrary to what you believe spiritually. Right. So those are some of the characteristics that you would look for in a a couple that you might ask to mentor you. Right. Um, one thing with marriage mentors and is is uh, you need to get yourself connected to somebody that's that's going to keep it, uh, for lack of a better term, keep it real mm-hmm. with you and your spouse about uh, what's going on or what they see or observe because you've shared your 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 um, viewpoints or your issues with them. They're going to keep it real with you what, with what you and your spouse may be going through so they can help you get through it kind of similar to how they got through it. Not saying that a lot of stuff that you go through, you may need more than one marriage mentor to get through some of the things that y'all encounter, mm-hmm. you know? Um, you know, some spiritual battles you may need that person, some, some intimacy battles, you may need somebody else that has been through that. 
but you need somebody that's that can help you get through whatever you and your spouse are battling. Right. Right. So they can that's why I say they need to keep it real. One yeah, you definitely need somebody who can be honest with you. I think that's what you mean by mm-hmm. keep it real. Yeah. Um, and who'll be transparent. Because if you have somebody who's sugarcoating it and making it appear as if their marriage is something it's not, they won't be able to give you the type of advice that you need to truly get through the hard times that you might face. You need somebody who um, who you can trust to keep your confidence, to keep you know your information confidential. Someone who, um, someone who is trustworthy. That's the word I'm looking for. Trustworthy and who understands um, confidentiality. Right. But you need to be able to be honest with them. They need to be honest with you. It's it's reciprocal. Right. Um, another thing that has to happen is, um. They need to under, to let you understand that they're not they're not perfect, you know. You me and the and the lady come over here every week and, and we give you all this information about how to keep your marriage in a in a in a safe place, especially in God. But we we still have our own struggles. Oh yeah, for sure. We we, we got them. There's there's no. But the difference is we have the tools to deal with them, whereas we didn't before. Right. That's a, a big difference. Mm-hmm. But we certainly don't try to hide it. <laughs> I mean, I because I, and I don't appreciate someone trying to help me if they aren't being real about it. Because right. you you can't really help me if you don't know how to go through it. If you got to mask it and cover things up, you you're not really going to be able to help me because you're busy covering up and pretending, and and that's not going to help me at all. I need to know how to deal with with the issues for real. Yep, and um, just like. Sarah. What's going to say? We all have them, mm-hmm. and I think she's talking about the issues. Mm-hmm. We got them. It's just about how you how you deal oh, with the yeah. issues. Yeah. You know, nobody's issue free in their marriage. And if somebody to tell me that, I'm looking at them real strange. Well, if they tell them. you that, you're gonna know that they aren't being honest. You know, even if you, I think older relationships, um, they may look like they don't have issues, but I think the difference is they learn how to handle them better. Right. That's the, you know, or they are just able to um, be more mature about how they handle those issues. And I think that has a lot to do with it, the level of maturity that, mm-hmm. that someone is. Which is which makes people, someone a, a good candidate possibly to be a mentor. Right. And that, that's us. You know, we mature through some things. And mm-hmm. as we encounter other issues that may come up, we are mature enough to know, okay, how are we going to handle this? Let's slow down and think about it. Let's get through it, talk about it, see what we need to do about it so we can get through it or to get some help right. to help us through it. Mm-hmm. So that's what that's what we do. All right. Um, and the, the hard thing about it is if, if you're a couple that's being mentored by somebody, that couple still can learn things from you, too. I mean, I don't. Yeah, it's not one of it's a reciprocal relationship is what it is. Oh, for sure. And you you know you're you're just not coming there to help your your mentor couple is there to help you, but you can also help them through some things. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's, well, it's one pe- of the, go ahead. People have different perspectives, mm-hmm. and sometimes um, listening to the problems that a couple has can give you insight on different ways to view issues that come up. And so, of course, you're able to pour as a mentor or you can pour into them. But sometimes those couples have some things that they're handling well that's not a problem for them that you can learn from it, even as a mentor couple. So even if your relationship is strong, I you know, would encourage you to consider, you know, reaching out to uh, if, you know, if someone reaches out to you or if you're able to offer that to someone uh, that might be struggling in their relationship um, to serve as a mentor couple. I mean, it's sort of a, um, it's a very selfless thing to do, to reach out and to offer to support uh, younger couples. Right. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. The most they can do is either accept it or not. Why is your side so dark? Right. The sun is coming through the side. We'll keep going. I'm yeah. going to make some adjustments. All right. So, 
what we're what we're talking about tonight is mentoring couples and how mentoring couples can help you survive in your your relationship. Um, also, what helps with mentoring couples is if me and Trina are mentoring the couples, and like we come on here every week, and we um, have couples that that watch us every week, what we have a tendency to do, or what I do, is we pray for those couples. That's that's the one thing we can we can do for every couple that that we that watch us. We don't we don't know by name, but we just pray in the spirit for those couples to to whatever issue they're going through, or if their livelihood, if their if their lifestyle is in a place where where it's causing them some issues, we can pray for those issues. You know, we we as a as Christians, we can pray in the spirit. I do not know who exactly we're praying for. We just put a blanket prayer out there and to to try to help those people because a lot of folk that listen or or, pay, or come on Monday nights and and watch this, um, we don't ever have an intimate conversation with them. So we pray for those people and the ones that we do have an intimate conversation with or get our help. We pray for specifics mm -hmm. for those couples. Exactly. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, you never want to underestimate the power of prayer, the power of inviting God into your situation. Um, and that, to me, is always the place to start. Right. Yep. So that's another thing we do. And when you got a mentor couple, you have somebody that supports the marriage. You don't need to find a mentor couple that supports me, or I don't need to find a mentor couple that just supports her. Right. We need a mentor couple that supports the marriage. Right. Because that is something we're trying to build together. That's that union that needs to be fortified. You know, if you got somebody that's just supporting you and they in your favor, then that's going to cause the marriage, marriage to become unbalanced. Well, and, you know, you have to think about, too, whether or not parents are the best mentor. Not saying they aren't. Sometimes they aren't. <laughs> Sometimes they aren't. <laughs> Sometimes they may. Because some parents are going to side with either their child they gave birth to or with the uh, person that's married into the family. They may side with more. But, you know, I think it's hard sometimes for parents to be um, completely unbiased. It is. I, you know, so many can. You know. I think a lot of them can be unbiased. They can be fair because they understand that they want the marriage to work. But, you know, yeah, we just have to be honest, y'all. Mm -hmm. Some of us are going to side with our own kid. Yeah. You know, or you go figure your kid is the one doing wrong and you go side with the spouse. <laughs> you know, but that can't be the attitude or the mindset of the mentor. The mentor has to be able to be um, a neutral party who's on the side of the marriage. Not on either spouse's side. Right. So. Yeah. That's, that can be a touchy situation. If you get somebody that's, you know, want to get their pet, their, their parents, um, I don't know, get parents' approval. wisdom, approval. Oh, okay. Get their parents' wisdom about how the marriage should be run. And you need to figure out real quick, you're not married to your dad or your mama. Right. Right. That, that can be the issue right there. So with that said, though, it's important to notice that um, there are other places to find mentors. Oh, yeah. You know, um, of course, your church is a good place to start off looking for solid couples that you might can ask to mentor you. Or of course, some churches have a um, marriage ministry that can help provide those mentors for you. Um, but you also can uh, look around at the other the people that are in your life that you recognize have a strong marriage right. and that have a similar support system to you. And don't be afraid to reach out and say, hey, we're a young couple. Um, it looks like you kind of have this marriage thing going pretty good. Would you be willing to help us out when we need it? But you kind of got, you got to vet them. You have to look ahead and kind of see what their pattern of behavior is, how they um, communicate, how they manage one another if they're able to be um, a good mentor to you. Uh -huh. You do have to, to look at it that way. But I would encourage you, you know, especially as a young couple, meaning under, what, 10, 15 years in right. particular, uh -huh. um, 
it's a good idea to have a couple that you can go to to help you sort out things. They aren't, they're not there to fix all your problems. They're not there to tell you who's right and who's wrong. Right. They're there to help you learn how to navigate marriage. And so we, I'm sure we serve as mentors um, passively just through this, this uh, service we offer um, with this Marriage Monday program. Mm -hmm. um, and that's great. That's great. I'm sure you can get a lot. That's why we're here, because we feel like it's helpful. Um, but sometimes you need a more personal, private conversation specific to your needs. And that's when you need to have thought ahead of time before you start having the problems to find someone who would agree to help support your marriage. Right. And don't be too prideful. And, you know, I've been approached, you know, by, by doing this, this show and um, and just my demeanor around where I'm, where I'm at. And I've had people to, to ask me for, you know, the wisdom of, of, of marriage and, and to want to talk to me about it. But, you know, one thing that I tell a lot of people that try to come to me for that advice is that I just can't share the wisdom with you and not your, your spouse, because that means you getting information that he or she is not. So it, it's, it's out of order for me to give you that, that wisdom when you're talking about your marriage. Now, if you want to talk about how you as a man operate in your marriage and, and you want to talk about that portion of it, we can talk individually. But if you want to help the whole marriage, it'll be good for you and your wife to talk to me and my wife. So do you counsel women? I do not counsel women. <laughs> right. No. That is the right answer. <laughs> that is the no. right answer. Right, I, and I don't, I don't counsel me. Nope. Yeah, so unless if place. we're together, you know, we can share those insights together. Right. But yeah, we don't we don't cross gender with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't get into it. I tell them quick. I, I don't get into that now. But if there's a man that wants to talk to me, I will talk to him mm -hmm. about marriage. And yeah. you know, and coming to the next point, uh, the access to God and the wisdom, I don't give him. The coach. I don't give him Nick Brinson. I give him what the word says. Right. On based on how to be a man in his marriage. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's what that keeps me in alignment with, with God. That keeps me in alignment with me giving him good godly wisdom. Because he can always go back to that and see where I found it. Right. So you you gotta have mentors that rely on God's wisdom to help get them through whatever they're dealing with. Yeah. And those people are there. They are there. They are in your life. They're in your community. Um, and you'll find them if you're looking for them. Mm -hmm. I sure are. All right. And one, one more thing that I want to talk about is when you are dealing with a marriage mentor and you're you're dealing with that person, make sure you, you're dealing with somebody that's sharing their successes and their failures. Make sure they yeah. can, like, like you yeah. said earlier, make sure they open with what they've been going through. They tell you everything is perfect and and everything is just great. Now, it may have worked out to be perfect, but they need to take you through that, of uh, the process that they use to get through it, to give you some steps or some some help or some advice on how they got through that. It just don't happen overnight. That's safe to say, right? Right. Oh, okay. for sure. It yeah. just don't happen overnight. A great marriage not. takes work. It takes work. Anytime you run into somebody and you recognize that they have a great marriage, I promise you, they got a story to tell. They have some advice to give. They have some um, beliefs that they rely on. They have some systems in place. It takes work. It does not happen haphazardly. It, it takes work. And it does. Mm -hmm. Because it's... it's it's one thing that's that's never a marriage is always evolving. Right. You know, you go they 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 put it in stages from well, one to five years and five to ten years, then some about a seven year itch and uh, mm -hmm. ten to fifteen years, twenty years. We right now are almost at our twenty fifth anniversary. I think yeah, that's next year. Months. Yeah, no, a year and some months. Yeah, a year and some months. So we've we've been through some things in a marriage. We mm -hmm. we've encountered some things and we we are pretty wise about the ways of marriage. But then we have people that are not like, like our bishop and our first lady. 
And I'm going to say this, like your mother and your father mm-hmm. that are that are able to give us the kind of wisdom we need in order to make our marriage go to that, that 40 year or that 50 year of being together. Because this thing is, 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 is not a one trick pony. It changes, right. it matures, it develops. And that's the greatness of what marriage is. You know, that, that first year seems like, you know, everybody's so perfect together. We just love each other so much. And then, you know, that thing called life hits you. Mm-hmm. Then you have to figure out how to, how to work this thing out. Yep. You if you're going to stay together. You start having kids. Ooh. You start having money problems. Mm-hmm. Or, yeah, life happens. It, it will. So you got to talk to those people that have experienced that life that you're experiencing right now. Where it seems like you can't. It seems like it's something that you can't get through. But um, we've been through some of those things that you can't get through. Just guess what? We came through them. Mm-hmm. To some help. Yep. Definitely to some help. That's it. You got anything else tonight? Um, I think that's pretty much it. It's not a, I mean, I don't think it's a complicated issue. Nope. It's just something that we felt like needed to be said. Is that it's very important for you to have a marriage mentor. Um, especially if you have a young marriage. Um, even if you're an old person with a young marriage, uh-huh. you more than even more so than the younger people might need, you know, a mentor. Because if you've already been married previously and those marriages have not worked out well, you 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 have some bad habits. You have some bad thought processes, not saying the failure of the marriage was your fault, but you were a participant. And so you've learned some uh, ways and some patterns that did not produce produce a good marriage. And so you need to renew your mind concerning your marriage. Right. So I don't care how old you are. If your marriage is young, you you will benefit from having a couple to support you. So find someone you respect, somebody you can trust, somebody with some wisdom. That's a very, very good point. That's a very good point. Yeah, but y'all young couples, start looking around. Ask people. You know, if they don't mind meeting with you, you know, once, twice a year or once a quarter um, until you can kind of get the hang of it. Get some of that wisdom that they've learned. Mm -hmm. You know, the stuff that we've been through, we're more than happy to share it with you guys on here and with, you know, couples in real life. Because we've been through some challenges that are very common. I don't think it's anything we've gone through that's been exclusive to us, us or, or unique. I don't no. think any of it has been really unique. It's all just common human problems. And so we can, uh, we haven't been through everything, but we certainly have some systems in place to deal with what we've been through. And those systems are working. It took some trial and error. It took a whole lot of prayer, a whole lot of being willing to change because that's a big part of it too. Is being willing to hear when people give you advice and being willing to put that into action. You have to be willing to change. If you're sitting around waiting on your spouse to change, you will probably be disappointed. Yeah, and we, we, we decide to just, at this point in our relationship, just go ahead and commit to it. Just commit to the, to the marriage and each other. We just decided that? Until my, through our process of growing to this point, oh, okay. we decided to commit. So make sure no, I'm not just right. to die. I was going to say, what did you talk about? No. Okay. Commitment happened a long time ago. Because if that hadn't happened, we wouldn't be sitting here together. I think, yeah, that's true. Yeah. And it's not just a one-time commitment. Because you, you know, you can commit wholeheartedly at the point that you decide to get married. You commit wholeheartedly at the uh, point that you actually get married, you mm-hmm. know. Um, and... When things are going well, it's easy to make that commitment. But it's when the rubber hits the road that you have to decide and know that you're sticking with your decision and you have to be committed to figuring out how to work it out. So that that commitment, which I think we've we've done that a few times. Right. We've talked about it yeah. several times. Yeah. But it's it's worked out. It gets better. As you get better with your um, management of your relationship, the relationship gets better. All right. So that's good. Yep, yeah, that's it. Well, as we close out tonight. Oh, there's a long, uh, what did Ron just say? Oh, 
So I said, you can't take your partner for granted or and think that they are totally satisfied. I love mm-hmm. to have conversations with my husband concerning where we are. Together. Mm-hmm. together. Yeah. That's very wise, yeah. Actually talk about it. Even yeah. when things are going good, it's good to kind of stop and take stock of where you are um, and to be conscious about your about having a good relationship. Yeah. Yep. Thank you for that comment. Yes, ma'am. Thank you um, to everyone who made comments and participated tonight. Um, go ahead and share. Let's get this message out to um, lots of couples. All right. So with that said, I just want to say my wife is celebrating a birthday this week, y'all, on Wednesday, the 29th. I'm not going to give her age out because she looks a lot younger than what she she is because she's a beautiful person. And we are going to celebrate her on Wednesday night and a little bit this weekend. So with that said, and I might put her cash up into the thing so y'all might Uh, Okay, she don't want me to do that. Mm-hmm. You can do, they can donate to the church. All right. So with that said, from the lady and the coach, we love y'all. Good night. <laughs>